You're listening to the Functional Nurse Podcast, and on this episode, we will discuss the importance of evaluating and understanding patient readiness and motivation for change when practicing functional medicine. So stay tuned. Hello, nurses, and welcome to this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. My name is Bridget Sager, and I'm your host. I am a functional medicine consultant, family nurse practitioner, and nurse coach, and I teach functional medicine for nurses through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine. Today's topic, I think, is a really important one to understand when practicing functional medicine. We often, as we're learning functional medicine, start to become overwhelmed with, uh, I think it's a really common theme to feel like we're seeing opportunities to improve health in those around us not just our patients, but also maybe our friends and family members. And it can be really challenging to have knowledge that maybe other people aren't uh, interested in or ready for. And so frequently when I talk about functional medicine with other nurses, we get on the topic of the sense of frustration and how to cope with that and continue to practice functional medicine offering it to those that are truly interested and maybe avoiding having those conversations with those that um, aren't ready for change yet or are just plain old not interested in what we have to talk about. And that's the reality of what we do. And I think it's, it is common for people that have all kinds of professions that maybe people don't want to hear them ramble on about it at a family barbecue. So <laughs> I think that as nurses, we often feel like In particular, in our personal lives, if someone starts to tell us their health story, we assume that they want advice. And that is often incorrect and hard to get our heads around that they may be coming to us as a family member or a friend and a listening ear rather than as uh, someone seeking health advice. And so what I have tried to do is avoid that need to approach conversations in a way where I feel like I'm fixing something or trying to be anything other than a listening ear. Uh, In particular, when we're talking about friends and family, we should assume that they want the same from us that they would want from any other friend or family member. So us being present and listening. If they want knowledge from us, they can ask the question and then we can we can share at that point. And I think that's a really healthy way to approach that. And so um, although this is more a, a topic about patients today, when we're talking about motivation and readiness, I think it's important to talk about the family part too, because it does come up. For me, what I found to be effective in my personal life and also for my students that are practicing functional medicine is to refer people in our personal lives to a provider of their own to have a professional relationship with. Important thing to keep in mind there is that, you know, we don't have the full picture. You know, in functional medicine, we love to get a really thorough background and story. And we're often going to be missing pieces when we are having conversations in our personal lives about people's health story. Uh, I have certainly encountered that myself where maybe you didn't even know about some medications they were on or some things going on that they hadn't chosen to talk to you about in their personal lives. And those are things that they would have probably disclosed with someone in a professional partnership working towards their health. That is one of the reasons that I think using a tool like the IFM.org Org, the Institute for Functional Medicine's practitioner search feature, and they can find a provider in their uh, area that specializes in whatever they're interested in looking into deeper. Um, so that's my advice on handling it in your personal life. My other uh, thing that I often encourage my students to do is start a professional social media page where you share kind of did you know sort of facts. That way, if there's something that you have been wanting to share with people as you're learning functional medicine, you're sharing it in a broad public format and they can choose to follow that and read it and come to you and ask for more information if they're ready to have more information. We can always share, you know, research articles. We can share, um, uh, you know, I love sharing like a YouTube video where some of the um, popular functional medicine providers are having a dialogue, for instance, or they're educating in a YouTube video on a topic. 
And then we can always share uh, handouts that we have and, and other things with people that are interested. And sometimes that can take the burden off of us trying to prove that functional medicine is valid or evidence-based when we are using research articles and some of our handouts that are generated using evidence-based resources. Okay, so when we're actually talking about patients, the way that I wanted to approach this is kind of the the challenge I used to face in my primary care practice. And I want to do that because currently I have my own practice where I only see patients that have come to me seeking functional medicine. So they are typically pretty motivated and ready for change. I do an intake on them um, where they do everything online to fill out quite a bit of information for me ahead of time. And one of the things I evaluate on that intake form is their readiness for change. And I include questions on there to gauge how motivated they are for various things. For example, uh, willingness to change their diet, willingness to change their physical activity, um, willingness to take supplements. And I have clients that are not interested in using supplements or avoiding them as much as possible. And if you've listened to me, you know my philosophy is we shouldn't have people on a bunch of long-term supplements that is not functional medicine. Functional medicine by definition is us finding the root cause for someone and healing that. And as a result, maybe they're on a few supplements long-term that many of us would benefit from. Before this time where I was practicing in a consulting practice of my own, I was a primary care provider in a corporate healthcare system for about four years. And so I was seeing patients in time blocks. And um, as I'm sure most of you as nurses know, you know that we're not given a ton of time to spend with people for education. So as I was learning functional medicine, I was trying to add it into my visits and I was really excited about everything I was learning. I was starting to see trends in my patients that were really um, like I was able to relate to what I was learning and apply it to people that I was seeing. The unfortunate thing that was happening is I was seeing a lot of people who had come to an allopathic corporate healthcare system for care. And the expectation is often a prescription medication or a quick answer. And so I had a panel of patients that some of them were very interested in lifestyle and nutrition and a holistic approach, but many of them were very interested in a corporate healthcare model with prescription and surgical interventions for most of their health concerns. And as a result, I really struggled with my time and who I was going to be focusing sharing that knowledge with. And initially, I was really overwhelmed with trying to share it with everybody, which just doesn't work. And, you know, I can't share this with everyone. And then, you know, at the end of a visit, you find out somebody wasn't interested at all. And they say, anyway, can you just refill my prescription? So uh, I talk a lot with nurses about how do we identify those people in an allopathic healthcare setting or in an integrative practice that are interested in having that longer conversation and spending the time looking for their personal why for their health concerns. So that's why I thought that this would be a great podcast episode for us today. For those of you that are also nurse coaches, you are probably really familiar with this idea of evaluating someone's motivation and readiness for change. I learned this when I did the nurse coaching program through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy, and I apply it in my practice all the time. I talk about uh, the idea often with nurses that um, even in my functional medicine practice, they'll ask me, how often am I using my coaching skills? And most of my patients or clients come to me ready for change. They are motivated, but they are often motivated in what is on the surface in our health, right? They know that they're willing to come see me and pay cash to have a conversation where I help them find some clarity as to their root cause. And they are probably expecting to maybe address lifestyle, exercise, um, stress in a generic term, um, maybe their work stress, uh, nutrition, they typically want some guidance on what to eat, when to eat it, how much to eat. Um, they want guidance on supplements, but we often find that the root of someone's health concerns has nothing to do with, you know, they're, they're already eating a wonderful diet, 
and taking ideal care of themselves as much as possible. And we find that maybe the root of their health concern is something that's harder to address example that I use often is, you know, somebody that is working night shift in a hospital setting, that is a stressor that can cause uh, health concerns for someone. Um, overwhelming demands in their personal life, maybe being a caregiver for multiple people, uh, that can, can be a, a stressor that can be the root cause for someone. Uh, unhealthy relationships with friends or loved ones can be at the root. And so when we start to find these root causes that are a little bit harder to um, be ready to change, or maybe that wasn't on their list of things they were ready to work on. We, I do need to use my nurse coaching more often. And so I often start a, a partnership with somebody and we are addressing the surface level things that we identify and we're talking about a lot about the, the first things I mentioned, you know, their lifestyle, toxin exposures, nutrition, meal timing, um, reviewing lab work and looking for root cause. But when we find that it is something that they're not ready to change, that is when my nurse coaching is what I use more of. So uh, people often ask me about that. So I thought I would share. Um, there is a actual uh, model for the stages of change that we learn in uh, nurse coaching that I thought I would share with you. It is, if you're not familiar with it, the trans theoretical model. Um, and we talk about the stages of change in that model. And it is uh, this idea that the first stage for change is pre-contemplation. So this is when someone is not thinking about changing at all. And they it's not on their radar. They're 0% motivated for change. Um, contemplation is the next stage. And that is when someone is truly considering change and maybe seeking some more information. I find that contemplation is when they recognize the discrepancy that maybe this thing needs to change in order for them to meet a goal they have in their life. Uh, but they're not necessarily like planning out their steps for what to do next. Preparation is when they have made a decision to make a change and they are preparing for that. And then the fourth step is action. And that is when they are taking action, they are making the changes and maintenance is the fifth step. And that is uh, when we come up with a long-term plan. Often we talk about there being a sixth stage and that would be the relapse stage. And that certainly happens in most change. Um, and so those are the five to six uh, stages of change there. We can talk about that in terms of exercise. If you have a patient that is uh, not exercising whatsoever, they have a sedentary lifestyle, maybe they're behind a computer screen all day long and they are 0% motivated. They're in the pre-contemplation stage. They are not interested in that. So maybe you have a visit with them or a conversation and you mention the association that that might have with one of their chronic health concerns or something that they're concerned about in their health. Um, at the point of pre-contemplation, they are not necessarily ready for that information yet, but hearing it is still okay. And I think that's an important takeaway from the conversation we're having on this episode is just like when somebody's not ready to quit smoking yet, they still need to keep hearing from trusted providers that they're they're working with that it is something on their list that is affecting their health. So it is okay to mention that something needs to be addressed, but they might not be ready to hear that yet. Um, it isn't something to ramble on about, right? If somebody is not interested in changing, just mentioning the the way it is associated with their health concern. Um, and a good example of this to sidetrack for a second is when I did work in primary care and I had somebody come in for a follow-up on anxiety or depression. The first question that I always had during those visits was how much sleep they're getting and the quality of their sleep. And I would educate them that until we get them to a quality seven to eight hours of sleep, that is going to continue to affect their mental health. And so you will often encounter a patient that has anxiety that is getting three to four hours of sleep. That could be the root cause of their health concern, or it could be 
a confounding thing that, you know, it's, it's a catch 22. And so educating them on the fact that that could be at play and getting them over time, partnering together, pointing out that that may be at play. They might not be ready to do anything about it or not be able to see a way past it, but now they're thinking about it a little bit more. So when we step back to the exercise part, I just really like the anxiety depression example. Um, when we step back to my exercise example, um, so for contemplation, now someone is, uh, they've seen it in a news reel that week, they heard their sister-in-law talking about it and you brought it up at the last visit. So they're kind of thinking, yeah, okay, maybe my low back pain really does have something to do with sitting in a computer chair all day long and then moving to the couch after work. So they're contemplating change. And that may be a place where they start to seek information from you. Preparation is when they're making plans for change. So someone that is planning to start exercising would be in the preparation phase when they are considering are they going to go to the gym for exercise? Are they going to um, do workouts at home? What do they enjoy doing? And so they may seek knowledge from family members or from a healthcare practitioner like a nurse to figure out what might be the best plan for them and what would really have an impact on the goals they're trying to meet. So preparation is getting some knowledge and coming up with a plan to move forward. Um, that may be in the case of exercise, do they have the clothing that they need and the shoes? Um, do they need to purchase any exercise equipment for their home or a workout video? Whatever that may be for them. Um, and if it's joining a gym, it may be budgeting for that is part of preparation. Action, I think is pretty clear as the next stage is taking the action. So getting started with their new habit or their um, their new change. And then maintenance would be the the ongoing version of that. So, you know, what we what we find during that action and maintenance phase in the example of exercise would be, you know, maybe they're finding, gosh, you know, I try to go to the gym. I've chosen the gym. I started going and I find that things get really hectic in the evening and sometimes I'm not able to make it and I really wanted to go three days a week and sometimes I'm only going one. And they find that, you know, their children have sporting events in the evening and so that time isn't working for them. When they work with a nurse coach or a functional medicine provider, you can tease through that and help them uh, find maybe a solution. So maybe they do their exercise during their lunchtime at work or they go and work out before their work time each day. Maybe they you find that, you know, the gym just isn't feasible for them. And so you start to brainstorm what might work to help them meet their goals. So I just wanted to share with you the trans theoretical model because I think it really lays out this idea that people can be on a spectrum of being ready to even change. And when we are having a conversation with a patient, and they are not ready for change yet. And we throw all of this information at them about like the very best version of health that they could have. And that, you know, the recommendation according to this organization for the goal they're trying to meet, let's say, you know, for exercise weekly is, you know, for them to do 30 minutes of uh, aerobic exercise five days a week for heart health. And we share that information with them. That is very likely to be way too much for somebody that hasn't been doing any exercise at all. And so if we pull that back and say, make the connection for them that maybe their low back pain from sitting in front of a computer all day long could be linked to the, you know, we connect those two for them, that, that they are doing something in their life that might be affecting their health the wheels start turning and they need to be ready to make a change. The, there has to be a pain point for them that is motivating them to contemplate change. I talk to nurses about this idea of evaluating people. It often doesn't cross our mind. We just wanna share what we have learned about functional medicine because it's exciting and it can truly heal people, which is really unique in a lot of healthcare settings but that doesn't mean that people are ready to hear it. And so I think recognizing this, taking a moment to pause um, and, and evaluate whether this person is ready to hear our whole spiel, right? 
And something I read recently, one of my students wrote was that they can usually tell if somebody is truly ready to heal, hear our whole our whole spiel for them on our functional medicine thoughts on their health by how they personally are describing their health concern to you, the types of words they're using, how they speak about it. If there's some curiosity in what they're saying or they're telling you that they've made five different changes that haven't been effective and they're really looking for a healthcare practitioner that they can partner with and uncover a better way to treat what they're concerned about. The thing about functional medicine is, is it is so patient centered. And so one great thing about this whole conversation it is already in our thought process to make everything about the patient and about a plan that is truly unique for them. I often mention, you know, the difference between lifestyle medicine and functional medicine is that lifestyle medicine is the pillars of success. It's the ultimate best version of health. And in functional medicine, we would love for everybody to reach that place. But in reality, we're meeting people where they are. And so this conversation we're having today is such a great example of that. If we want to move people a little bit closer to the the health and wellness end of the spectrum of wellness, so we can get them closer, but we don't need to expect them to to hit the, the gold star right out the gate. And so when we can evaluate that, have a real conversation with them, what are they willing to change right now? What are they ready for? What questions do they have? And what barriers do they have to change? Sometimes we can have a barrier that makes us not feel like change is even possible. And talking that through with someone else that's asking curious questions can help us to identify a new way forward. One big part of this is listening. And it is a huge part of being a nurse coach is to be a good listener. But in functional medicine, we do a lot of listening too. So we shift from this idea of being the expert in the room with our patients to recognizing that they are the expert in what we need to help them. We need their story. We need the background. We need their thoughts and feelings on what's getting in their way. And so being a a listener is a big part of understanding and empowering people when we're using functional medicine. I think I touched on this a little bit earlier. I wanted to mention this idea of of, um, setting realistic goals for people. And so they are going to come up with their own goals, right? We can give them some education on what might impact their health, and then they can decide to partner with us in moving towards that goal. When we do that, one of the big things that we can do, move them on the scale of of readiness and motivation is to reinforce positive behaviors. So I think one thing that can be really impactful with this is coming up with a goal that they absolutely can achieve and you can celebrate the next time you talk to them. Um, An example would be, uh, I read a book where this was an example a long time ago. I thought it was really helpful for me to, to be able to verbalize it easily. If you ask somebody to go for a walk 30 minutes, five times a day, and they have not been exercising at all, they're probably not going to be successful the next time you see them. And so then they're going to talk about their failure and what kept them from being able to meet that goal. But when you make the goal something really simple that they can work beyond, then you get to celebrate their achievement and it starts to cement the behavior and they can expand on that over time. Uh, So the suggestion was to ask them if it was reasonable for them to put their sneakers on and go to the mailbox every day, five days a week or three days a week, whatever feels 100% doable to them is the expectation. And it may sound really silly to say, you know, all I want you to do is walk to the mailbox. But but by the time they have the sneakers on and they are out the door and they are at the mailbox, it often will feel pretty silly to not continue on that walk. So I think that um, the idea of us making sure that any goals that we come up with for someone is truly achievable and something that we can reflect on at their next visit that at the beginning of that visit can be like i know these are some goals or the goal that we established together at the end of your last visit 
how did how did that go for you? And if they were successful, if it was it was something that was really achievable for them and they were successful, then you get to start that visit on a positive note and say, oh, that's wonderful. Celebrate with them and then talk about what next steps look like because things start to feel possible and they have a partnership with someone that is motivating for them. I think for some people, the accountability of coming back and saying, yes, I did it. You know, I I, I had to do it because I had to come tell you that I followed through. Um, the accountability of working with a functional medicine practitioner or a nurse coach can be all the difference for some people, absolutely. One thing that we can use to cement this is uh, tracking devices. And so if we're talking about exercise in particular, but you can apply this to many different topics, we can identify a tool that can help them track meeting goals. And that can be helpful for motivation and staying accountable as well, is if we have, for example, a, an application on their phone that tracks their exercise, activity levels, calories burned, whatever their measure is that they're interested in achieving, we can use a, a, an application on the phone, a chart on the refrigerator. My patient portal that I use Practice Better has a lot of tools in there that, that I can use for patients that want to be able to track what they're eating, their activity, their mood, sleep, whatever that thing is for them that they're working towards, having a place where they can keep track of their successes and even when they aren't successful writing down what got in the way, coming back and talking with you at the next visit can be a really great conversation where you help them identify maybe a different way forward that's more effective. Because the most important part of all of this is that what we do isn't for you know, the January workout plan where everybody wants to go to the gym in January. We want them to still be you know, well past that first month of change for it to be something that is maintained. So I hope that this episode was helpful for many of you in identifying which patients are ready to have those big conversations that might take more time in a visit or during your communications with them. And also a little bit at the beginning there about uh, how we can handle having these conversations with family members and friends. And until next time, be well. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. If you want to help spread the word about the powerful role nurses can play as true healers using functional medicine practices, consider sharing an episode with a nurse friend or on social media. And click the subscribe button to stay informed of newly released episodes. You can also visit and share the links below in the show notes for more information on nursing resources and the functional medicine for nurses course offered through the integrative nurse coach academy in partnership with the institute for functional medicine